احتمالی فدراسیون فوتبال و باشگاه ها گفت سالانه حدود هزار میلیارد تومان در لیگ برتر و لیگ دسته یک فوتبال ایران از بیت المال هزینه می شود اما رئیس کل دادگستری استان خراسان رضوی هم از دستگیری مدیر و دست کم چهار تن از خدمه هتلی که تعدادی از زائران غیر ایرانی در آن جان باخته اند خبر داد به گزارش خبرگزاری ایسنا معاون وزیر بهداشت استفاده از یک سم غیر مجاز برای سمپاشی در اتاقها را علت مسمومیت خوانده است رئیس کل دادگستری استان خراسان رضوی از قرص برنج به عنوان سم استفاده شده گفته است که در این میان انجام شده در همین حال هم وزارت بهداشت نیست با انتشار بیانی در این باره تاکید کرد که تا کنون هیچ مستندی مبنی بر عمدی بودن مسمومیت زائران عربستانی گزارش نشده است به گزارش ایرنا چهار طبعه عربستان سعودی در پی این حادثه جان باختند حدود 32 تن دیگر هم که زائر غیر ایرانی خوانده شدن راهی بیمارستان شدن امروز دوشنبه هم حال عمومی این افراد مناسب توصیف شده است ایزان با ما باشید با مشروع اخبار در سطح دوازده به وقت لسانجلس درود و وقت به خیر به شما بینندگان گرامی به برنامه مادر و کودک خوش آمدید من دکتر نلی فرنودی زهیلی هستم و امروز برنامه بسیار جالبی براتون تهیه کردیم و گستمون رو و کسی که واقعا قرار خیلی چیزای یاد که یاد بگیریم از ایشون و آگاهی ما رو بالا ببره در رابطه با بچه ها و children enrichment, education, sports, um, child development all those wonderful topics با ایشون صحبت خواهیم کرد امروز روز ورزش و به صلاح جشن گرفتن اون عبادی از کودکان و نوجوانانمون که از طریق ورزش شروع میکنن اعتماد به نفس پیدا میکنن درباره خودشون احساس خوبی درباره خودشون میکنن و میتونن که با ورزش اون پیس لرنینگ یا اون توجهشون رو به اون کارهایی که مهمه در کامینتیشون بذارن و ارتقاء آگاهی در خانواده ها از طریق ورزش گست امروز من کسی نیست به غیر از کوچی که she's an incredible coach an amazing coach on personal level باید بهتون بگم که من تجربه خودم یه سال پیش با این کوچ با پسر خودم شروع شد و هر روز یا هر باری که او رو ملاقات می کردم تو فیلد ساکر ازش یاد گرفتم با صحبت هایی که با هم داشتیم تونستم که بهتر پسرم رو بشناسم کمکش بکنم و سپورت به صلاح ایشون بود به عنوان یک کوچی که not only dedicated but extremely knowledgeable um, well rounded and focused on children's development how do we promote uh, wellness health within those uh, the framework of um, sports and children's enrichment uh, 
مهمون گرامی امروز من کوچ الیز پیرز ویلکم تو دی شو اند ایت سو گود تو هاف یو ایم سو اکسایتد یو ار ون اف مای فیورت مام آی هاف تو سی هاندز داون آی لوف یو آی لوف یور اپروچ آی لوف یو از ا مام ایم انسپایرد ایوری تایم آی واچ یو انٹریکٹ وت چیلڈرن آن اند آف دی فیلد اند ایتس بین ان انکریڈیبل جرنی یا ایتس بین فانتاستیک سنس ام since I started the whole thing and just getting to know people's children and your children, um, it's just icing on the cake. It doesn't really even feel like a job. It's, um, it's fantastic being involved in children's development and, and seeing them grow and seeing them learn and, and gain confidence in themselves um, as players, as people, um, and developing life skills that will hopefully stay with them th throughout the, their lives and make a difference in their success going forward and their confidence and their, their well-being um, as people. Give us a little background, uh, Coach Elise. Um, tell us about your early years, your early experiences as, as a kid yourself. How did you start this journey of becoming a professional? Well, you know, you played um, Stanford, yeah. correct? So uh, how, how did that journey start and where are you currently with that? Um, well, I started, I grew up here in Los Angeles mm -hmm. in the San Fernando Valley. Mm -hmm and um, went to Stephen Weiss for elementary school and then to Harvard Westlake. Um, and when I was a child, you played every sport. There wasn't um, this intense specialization in one sport. Mm -hmm. um, kids would rotate between basketball and soccer, mm -hmm. track, swimming, whatever was sort of the um, sport of the season. Mm -hmm. um, it, How it was, old were you when you started? I, um, well, I, I started sports at four okay. um, and just I just loved, I loved movement. I loved the process of moving mm -hmm. my body. Mm -hmm. um, I did love the process of competing. I loved the process of being on a team and mm -hmm. the feeling of having teamwork. Um, and by the age of 12, I, I had narrowed it down to soccer mm -hmm. and sort of took that to a more intense level and mm -hmm. started playing club soccer and travel soccer, um, made the under 16 and under 20 national teams for the United States. That's amazing. Um, yeah. That's amazing. Um, so tell me, because for, for me, a mom just starting this journey with, with um, our son, I'm, I'm kind of in the dark. You know, I don't know, do we, uh, variety sports, multi-sports, is that the way to go in the early years? You know, uh, our kids are seven and five, so they're just starting into this, um, being active and being excited and learning about different sports and developing, building on skills. So do we uh, support them with variety of choices and multi-sports? Do we support them when they want to focus on one, like, you know, our son is now in really into um, soccer, but he also wants to play flag football and he wants to play basketball and other sports, tennis and golf. So Give, give, give us some tips or those moms and dads who are um, interested in starting this developmental experience with their kids. What would you recommend to those parents? Um, I think in my experience, and, and I have three children also, yeah. I have an 11-year-old, a 9-year-old, and a 7-year-old. Mm -hmm. um, in my own experience, watching the hundreds of kids I coach, I think that um, playing a, a variety of sports is very important. Okay. Um, I think that when a child decides there is one sport they want to specialize in, mm -hmm. that, that, is, that is good. I'm hesitant for children to specialize at the age of six, seven, eight, nine. Mm -hmm. I think um, it's a lot of pressure mm -hmm. um, to be just involved in one sport. Mm -hmm. It also limits your social circle and the kids that you get to know and get involved with. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of muscle and gross motor development, mm -hmm. um, every study has shown that cross training and playing other sports really increases your gross motor development mm -hmm. and prevents injuries mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. prevents burnout. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think seven-year-olds playing soccer five, six days a week in a structured environment mm -hmm. can um, can be a lot for kids, mm -hmm. even if they're saying they want it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That said, I think uh, I played soccer every single day um, from the age I was seven on. Mm -hmm. And um, I played in my backyard, and I played against the wall in my house, and I played with neighborhood kids, and I played after school and at recess. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that kids can play every day. I just don't think they need to be in a structured practice setting every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that putting them in um, structured practice setting every day inhibits their creativity. It inhibits their passion. 
Um, and I think it's those 10 or 15 minutes they play on their own mm -hmm. that they can really acquire a lot of skills and develop their own creativity, their own style of play, mm -hmm. um, and take ownership for the sport as well. Great. So um, tell us about your um, Premier uh, Development Academy and sort of your vision for your company and where are you going with this because I think it's a really important message that you're giving to parents and uh, finding the right program, the right coaching or coaches who are really focused on this developmental approach that you really you know, want to um, build on different skills and be mindful about uh, social, emotional, and physical development, maybe spiritual perhaps. Right. And, and really work with you know, you, the whole kid, an individual child who um, needs all the support or coaching from different aspects and you really grow with them and help them develop until the time is right to, for them to focus perhaps on one particular sport that they're really passionate about. Yeah. Right. So I started um, the Premier Development Academy mm -hmm. um, when my own two children, Jordan and Danny, um, moved sort of from the pre-K kinder sports okay. into the AYSO sports. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, what I saw as they moved from toddler programs to more competitive sports settings mm -hmm. was that all the nurturing, all the cheering, all the focus on development and growth and effort that mm -hmm. you saw mm -hmm. in those toddler classes, be it an art class or a music class or a dance class or a sports class, mm -hmm. the emphasis when they were four and five years old was on growing and trying new things and having fun and feeling proud of themselves and building their self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And as they got older mm -hmm. um, and you put two goals in the game, mm -hmm. all of a sudden there was a fundamental shift from developing and growing and learning mm -hmm. to winning. Mm. And you would look at Facebook and every weekend you'd see how many goals somebody scored or yeah, how many sure. games somebody won. Mm -hmm. um, and there was no value of the effort. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. was much more result oriented. Mm -hmm. um, so kids quickly became identified as winners or losers. Mm -hmm. um, and kids, I believe, truly do see themselves as their parents see them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so all of a sudden parents were very invested in their kids being the best rather than in developing, in their kids scoring the goals, rather than in giving 100% effort. Um, mm -hmm. And so I wanted to put together an organization um, that would focus on that and would focus on um, promoting development and promoting growth and promoting certain life skills like resiliency, teamwork, respect, mm -hmm. um, learning to win and lose, resiliency, all of those things I thought were so key to, to child development. Mm -hmm. And in our um, typical setting of, of the tr tr traditional recreational model, we don't really have that. Um, and another thing I saw, as I think you're seeing with your son, is we started identifying certain children as accelerated or advanced and others as recreational or just average. And we would give a very different level of training to those children based on what we categorize them as. Mm -hmm. And I, I, was, I, was, I thought this was a fundamentally flawed system. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I, I, first of all, I don't think that any child should ever be labeled as advanced and some child be average mm -hmm. because especially at the ages of seven, eight, and nine, mm -hmm. it's a huge time for physical and developmental growth. Mm -hmm. And so um, labeling a child at seven as elite, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, first of all, puts a, a lot of burden on him, and labeling another child as not quite as competent mm -hmm. um, puts that on him, and, mm -hmm. and it stunts both of their development. Yeah. So, so I really felt there was a divide between the recreational models mm -hmm. and the club models, mm -hmm. and I didn't I didn't see why there had to be that divide. Mm -hmm. I thought that every child playing a sport should be given the same individualized, um, personalized, professional instruction as those typically reserved for our elite athletes. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was sort of my mission, was to give every single child, regardless of innate ability, mm -hmm. the same um, level of organization, the same level of training, mm -hmm. and the same quality of resources as those that we gave to those kids that we classified as talented. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. 
So, so I began to evolve this model mm -hmm. of the Premier Development Academy. Wonderful. And Premier is the modifier for the level of development, mm -hmm. not for the type of player we're training. Okay. So we are giving the Premier level of development mm -hmm. to, to any player. Got it. Got it. Excellent. That's, uh, that's brilliant. I think um, it's not only inclusive and it's not only uh, individualized to players, but also it builds a community where there's cohesion and everyone's very supportive of one another. Like you said, it takes away that unhealthy com competitive edge and it brings together families who are um, you know, going to grow together. And of course, at some point, based on their skills and talents, then, like you said, you, you will modify, modify and, and make certain recommendations so that they, they fall into the right track um, for future development. Um, but that's wonderful. We do have a clip, a short clip to show you um, from uh, Premier Development Academy. So uh, let's take a look, and then we'll be back with more questions. دوستان با درود فراوان به برنامه مادر و کودک خوش آمدید با کوچ الیز پیرس هستیم درباره رول مهم ورزش و ساکر فوتبال صحبت داریم میکنیم و اینکه چقدر خوبه موقعی که بچه هامون توی تیم سپورت میرن و میتونن نه تنها اون ابعاد شخصیتیشون رو یا احساسی آتفیشون رو دیولوب بکنن و رشد داشته باشن بلکه با همدیگه کانکت میکنن و دوستای خیلی خوب پیدا میکنن و این چقدر برای اعتماد به نفسشون خوبه چقدر خوبه که خانواده ها با هم به صلاح تو کامینیتی یه سیستم و یه نتورکی درست میکنن و با هم دیگه به قول معروف بزرگ میشیم کوچ الیز پیرس کوچ پسر من و دخترام هستش و چقدر مهمه که پسرها و دخترها هر دو تو این سپورتس یا تیم سپورتس انوالف باشن چون همونطور که میدونین آمار نشون میده بچه هایی که ورزشکار هستند و در ورزش های به خصوص تیم سپورتس مثل ساکر، بسکتبال، والیبال فعالیت میکنن 80 90 درصد شانس این که اعتیاد پیدا بکنن یا به صلاح الکلی بشن یا مشکلات سانی پیدا بکنن کمتر هستش در اون بچه ها بنابراین چرا که 
چرا نه این سپورتس رو این ورزش رو حمایت بکنیم میدونم که ما ایرونی هم که عاشق ساکر هستیم موقعی که سیزن ساکر شروع میشه هممون خیلی شوق و اشتیاق و فیفا که شروع شده بود میدونم ماها ایرونی ها به خصوص اینجا تو لس آنجلس پارتی های ورلد کاپمون که دیگه قوقا کرده بود بنابراین به برنامه به دنباله برنامه ادامه میدیم به زبان انگلیسی با کوچ الیس پیرز سوال بعدی که از ایشون دارم این هستش که در رابطه با به اصطلاح پریمیر دیولپمنت اکادمی که کمپانی ایشون هستش و در ضمن براتون تعریف کنم ایشون نه تنها یکی از بهترین های اسکولای لس آنجلس که هاروارد وست لیک هستش ساکر بازی کردن برای تیمشون و وارسیدی و اونجا فعالیت میکردن و خودشون از اونجا گریجویت کردن بعد از هاروارد وست لیک رفتن دانشگاه استنفورد ایشون گریجویت دانشگاه استنفورد هستن برای دانشگاه استنفورد ساکر بازی میکردن در تیم دانشگاه استنفورد بعد از دانشگاه استنفورد رفتن به دانشگاه هاروارد و اونجا حقوق خوندن بنابراین از اون سوپر مامایی هستن که واقعا هم از نظر آموزشی فرهنگی و اون آندرستندی که دارن خودشون هم مادر سه تا بچه هستن بچه هایی که واقعا من ایشون رو از طریق مامان بودن و رابطه شون با بچه ها باش آشنا شدم و خیلی از اون مامانایی هستش که she inspires me I love following her she's on uh, Facebook are you on uh, Twitter do you no. no I'm trying to keep up with my daughter yeah. does, okay. <laughs> There you go. So going back to our conversation on your vision and your goal and how you're supporting your community and, and children, really, um, in building their strengths. Um, and, you know, peace learning is my passion. So whenever I see a mom who's doing something amazing or incredible like yourself, I just get so excited. My, I, I get wide-eyed and so super excited. So tell me more. What's next? What type of programs do you offer? Um, wh what's your vision? And how are you different from the other programs that are being offered here in L.A.? Okay. Well, um, I think, the, I think the big difference between my program, mm -hmm. uh, Premier Development Academy, and mm -hmm. other soccer programs is I'm not really just there to teach a kid to kick the soccer ball. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there are hundreds of people thousands probably in the Los Angeles mm -hmm. area that have different skill sets that can help players kick a soccer ball. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that the hallmark of an, an amazing coach is a coach that can meet with a player once a week and teach them a bunch of things. Mm -hmm. I think the hallmark of a truly great coach is a coach that inspires you to do something 10 minutes every day on your own mm -hmm. and to claim ownership for your game and to promote your passion and to promote you learning outside the box mm -hmm. and to encourage children to take risks and to make mistakes mm. and to pick themselves up after they've made mistakes bravo, and to bravo. try again. Mm. So um, mm. I, I think that with the increased specialization in our society, mm. we see a huge um, oversaturation in the marketplace of coaches who are wanting players to be dependent on them, mm -hmm. who are saying, you must come to me to learn these skills, and mm. you must come to my camp, and you must sign up for my program to learn these things. Mm -hmm. um, I have a number of programs for kids of all ages and abilities, mm -hmm. um, but, but my goal through all of them is to really access that child, really find out what motivates them each individual child and encourage them to then run with it mm -hmm. and use my my program as a platform to spring off to wherever they want to go mm -hmm. um, we, that we have ongoing programs for kids of all ages and abilities um, but how, how do they get get in touch with you because we have a viewer who's now interested they want to learn more about summer camp and programs you're offering what's the best way to reach you and contact the center so they can sign up um, the best way right now our website is currently being redone mm -hmm. um, so the best way to reach me right now would be to um, just send me a personal email via my SBC Global account until we have it and that's okay um, and what's your email address? Elise Pierce A-L-Y-Z-E-P-I-E-R-C-E uh -huh. mm -hmm. at sbcglobal.net mm -hmm. so your first and last name at sbcglobal.net SBC okay, um, and so, so that's what makes us different. Mm -hmm. um, and another thing that makes us different is that I really want to address the four components of a child's soccer development. Mm -hmm. 
Um, the first one is obvious. It's the technical development, learning the basic skills mm -hmm. that are involved in soccer. Mm -hmm. The second one everybody does, it's the tactical components, okay. learning how to play in a team situation. Mm -hmm. The third one is athleticism. Mm -hmm. And we really don't want to make our kids just great soccer players. Mm -hmm. We want to make them strong athletes. Mm -hmm. So what's going to distinguish a good player from a great player mm -hmm. is their level of athleticism okay. and their ability to not be injured. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And we have partnered with um, a facility called the, tra the Training Factory, mm -hmm. the factory um, in Sherman Oaks, and they give top-notch training to our athletes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, another, uh, uh, probably the biggest thing that distinguishes our program mm -hmm. is that we give psychological and nutritional support to all of our athletes. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm currently going for my master's in sports psychology, and that's a big part of our program. 80% um, of a player's success, once they've reached a certain level of preparation, mm -hmm. is mental. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And we want to teach our kids to take risks. See, mm -hmm. We want to encourage them to try new things. Mm -hmm. We want them to know that getting knocked down doesn't mean getting knocked out. Yeah, yeah. Um, and what I love about your program, one of the aspects I love is how flexible you are. I've seen you many times mix in kids, co-ed, you know, we just show up at the arena and if you see a player is really passionate about playing in that game and there's an opportunity to bring him in, you have always integrated and brought him in and invited them boy girl little older younger you know it doesn't matter and I've seen how kids just light up you know they feel um, uh, loved and they feel nurtured and they feel supported and you're so good at that yeah I, yeah. I really I, I, I I'm very against things where you just have to sign up you get a specific time each day and that's the only time you can practice mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I really try to promote to the extent possible mm -hmm. a, a community of inclusivity yeah I want kids of all ages play together mm -hmm. I want this to be a community activity mm -hmm. I think that we as a society have moved away from having community-based programs mm -hmm. and have really stratified things boys here girls there nine-year-olds here mm -hmm. ten-year-olds mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. um, I think soccer is one of the great sports that can blur mm -hmm. socioeconomic gender lines. Absolutely. Um, you hit it right on the nail. It, and uh, we were at an LA Galaxy game this um, past weekend and I could see how everyone comes together. It's such an inclusive team and children, you know, they, children are innocent, you know, they, they, they have the innate ability to be inclusive and to love and be unconditional um, in that way. And so when you see their face light up and they're so happy and that the culture of soccer is all about that you know it, I think it's so important that you're integrating sports with community with support and peace learning everything is all there you know and, and the mix and and they're uh, internalizing all these important aspects of development with someone who cares about them who loves them unconditionally and supports them on these different you know social emotional physical spiritual I think you have really brought a well-rounded program together so thank congratulations you. thank <laughs> you I love it I mean I couldn't be prouder of it um, you know my my real education was as an attorney mm -hmm. and um, this is what I'm passionate about, seeing yeah. kids smiling, enjoying each other's company, feeling free to be themselves, feeling free to express themselves, mm -hmm. not labeling themselves or others. Um, that is my passion. Mm -hmm. um, and anything I can do to promote that is is what, I, what, what my overall objective is mm -hmm. with the Premier Development Academy. Great. I want to ask you a question because I've watched you in action with my son and um, my son you know he's shy he's more serious he's one of those kids who is not your typical extroverted kid as you know okay. and I've just watched him develop and evolve with you being um, you know his coach tell me like how do you interact with uh, kids who are maybe they start off a little timid they're more cautious they're you know perhaps shy and um, what's been your experience in supporting and nurturing these children I mean, I think, I think the biggest thing for any child, mm -hmm. um, a shy child, I also have children that have learning issues, mm -hmm. I have certain children with physical limitations. Yeah. Um, every kid has something that's unique about that child. Mm -hmm. And I think that the biggest thing that I want the kids to feel and understand is that I respect and adore them just for who they are. Mm -hmm. um, I don't need to change them. I don't want kids to fit a certain mold. Um, I am 
proud of who they are. I think every single person on a team brings something to that team, mm -hmm. whether they are the worst player or the strongest player, whether they're a quiet player or a vocal player. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I think players feel that they're respected, and we try to create a very emotionally safe environment mm -hmm. where kids can be themselves and they know their fellow players can respect them. Mm -hmm. um, also, in my program, um, in anything that I'm a part of, any coaching, any clinics, any camps, any games, we have a zero tolerance policy for um, bullying or kids speaking ill against one another. Great. So if that becomes an issue, I immediately address it not only with the child who was bullied or mm -hmm. who did the bully, but mm -hmm. the, with the whole team mm -hmm. because these are kids and they are learning. Mm -hmm. And this is, an, is just another learning environment. Mm -hmm. I feel sometimes when you get out on a field, people forget that coaches are mentors and educators first. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and they need to role model mm -hmm. and they need to set a place where people, where the kids can learn. Mm -hmm. So with a shy child, I encourage them to take risks. Yeah. We'll set up goofy obstacle courses mm -hmm. um, or goofy challenges that involve something that's not traditional. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that, I think, really brings them out of their shell. Something yeah. where they have to do something a little bit less inhibited. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So they're part of it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, we, mm -hmm. like, I try to do variations on the typical things. And For instance, if we're having an obstacle, we're having a relay race, I'll have them dribble up to a certain cone, mm -hmm. and then they dribble back, and then they have to use any part of their body to stop the ball except their foot. Mm. So they'll have to get down and use their ear oh. to stop the ball or their nose to stop the ball or their forehead. And just the process of doing it and watching your teammates do it, it brings out a certain joy. Yeah. Um, so we'll do that kind of thing. We'll do all sorts of competitions and they'll be skill based, mm -hmm. but they'll have a little bit something different to loosen the kids up. To loosen. And absolutely, you've done such an amazing job. My, I watched my son within a year go from, you know, being a little cautious or a little um, reserved to now being extremely excited about the game and uh, much more expressive and just uh, in leadership also. I, I, I've noticed he has stepped up and he's uh, broken out of his shell and he, he just he has developed uh, beautifully and has a strong passion for soccer and um, gets excited about going to practice and that's all because of you and your coaching. Well, amazing, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, I try, I try to encourage them to take their passion wherever they go. Mm -hmm. and what, if they give up soccer, I still want them to have developed all the skills that we promote. Yes. But they do everything they do with passion in life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They do everything with joy and with yeah. zeal. And because they're motivated, they're self-motivated to do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Tell us about summer camps. Are you offering any yes. special so summer camps? Yes, so we are offering camps um, every day in August. Okay. I feel like that's sort of the time when a lot of camps um, stop mm -hmm. and people are looking for the last few weeks yeah. of, of what do I do with my with my child so we're offering right. camps every day in August mm -hmm. um, Monday through Friday that is mm -hmm. um, till Labor Day mm -hmm. and they're going to be at Woodley Park which is an Encino mm -hmm. and what's great about our summer camps is it's appropriate for the most elite players mm -hmm. the, mo the highest level of players mm -hmm. up to age 13 so it's okay. 5 to 13 mm -hmm. um, to just a five-year-old who enjoys soccer or maybe an hour and a half or two hours. Mm -hmm. So we have obstacle courses. There's playground time for the younger kids. There's board games. There's art projects. Um, there's variations on soccer. There's, you know, kickball with a certain twist. And then for the older kids, we can, you know, we have sort of very m a multitude of levels where we can adjust it. Kids that want to play all day will be challenged and play all day. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll always end with something fun like a water balloon fight or something fun to connect the community. So the one thing that we do do with every camp session is every camper starts the day together mm -hmm. and every camper ends the day together. Okay. Because it is one community. Great. So they may go to different stations throughout the day, mm -hmm. but there is that sense of this is the camp, this is who I'm with today. Wonderful. All right, let's uh, shift gears a bit and talk about you as a mom. So what is it like being a mom? It's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, my kids are definitely my heart. Um, I Aww. adore them. Yeah. They, um, I think they, they are the motivation for anything I do. Mm -hmm. um, but they definitely were my motivation for doing this. Mm -hmm. um, when I first started working, um, I didn't have kids and I was an attorney and, and that was great and then with my first son Danny I continued as an attorney um, and then I had my 
my daughter Jordan and mm -hmm. I went part time and mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. with my son Josh I, I stopped altogether um, mm -hmm. and I stayed home for a few years to be a full time stay at home mom and it was great and I loved it and I loved being with them um, and I loved everything about it and it was you know three kids under the age of five so as you know what was that shift like for you because uh, as moms a lot of us especially professional moms who've had to make those sacrifices and I mean for God's sake you went to Harvard <laughs> yeah it was yeah. difficult I mean what was that like it was it was definitely a very difficult shift yeah. I yeah. mean I felt like my husband was also um, a Harvard law grad and we were just constantly scrambling yeah and um, that's I really, in my life, try not to have that scramble with my kids. Yes. I really think it's important to have downtime as a mm. family, where you're playing a board game, or we have a ping pong table in the middle of our house. Mm -hmm. And the reason we have that is because after a really long day, it's hard to stay serious when you're playing a game of ping pong. Yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. so I felt if we were both you know, racing around as attorneys and having to be in different locations for trials, um, our kids would come as an afterthought and, sure. and that was really important for me mm -hmm. for them never to feel like that mm -hmm. so but it was a mental shift I felt that um, is there a special moment that you remember that you just to yourself with yourself made peace and made that decision to um, it was, was more, it, a process? It, more was, like a, it was more a process yeah. but I definitely think um, I felt all my life I grew up felt feeling that I was strong in what I was doing and I was putting a hundred percent in and yeah. when I became a mom mm -hmm. and an attorney mm -hmm. it was very hard for me to reconcile the feeling that I couldn't give a hundred percent to my job and mm -hmm. I couldn't give a hundred percent to my kids and so I felt inadequate at both things <laughs> yeah. so that was a horrible feeling mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and I also felt that my kids really needed me and I really needed them mm -hmm. um, and um, so my my son had some early delays and my daughter had colic and we had a bunch of things going on but but at basic level I wanted to be there mm -hmm. um, you know in the same way I chose to go back to work because I was there mm -hmm. and I felt that I was becoming too absorbed mm -hmm. in their mm -hmm. activities mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I needed something external to my kids to satisfy sure. me sure. Um, and I didn't want to become so interrelated with their activities that I sought validation mm -hmm. from their successes mm -hmm. um, and looked to see if they were doing their art correctly and that validated me as a mom or mm -hmm. looked to see mm -hmm. if they mm -hmm. you know spelled the word correctly and that validated me as a mom I felt like I needed something of my own I had too much um, sort of intellectual stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's too much mind activity going on. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I've always been a creative person. I've always loved kids. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I looked at, at my kids and I looked at what they were going through as children. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I thought back on my childhood. And, and to me, in my childhood, there was a lot more play and a lot less work. Yeah. And I felt that my kids were being asked to work mm -hmm. every activity they did. Mm -hmm. You know, they had to go to this karate class and make it to the next belt and mm -hmm. go to this class and score the winning goal and then go to school and do all of this and in in my childhood there was a lot more of a community based play yeah um, there weren't as many organized activities yeah and um, and I and I missed that I wanted that for my kids sure um, and so and my kids are very different yeah. so I have my 11 year old son is is you know an amazing soccer player that's his passion that's mm -hmm. his big mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. my daughter is a skateboarder slash free runner slash she makes cool. eye movies <laughs> and my youngest son is very cerebral does <laughs> mad libs and reads and <laughs> very artistic um, and I wanted to create an organization where all three of them could participate and be happy mm -hmm. and so I thought this would be amazing if I could create one entity mm -hmm. where very athletic, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. very intense soccer players could come mm -hmm. where children like my daughter who is a talented athlete but didn't want to devote tons of time to it could come mm -hmm. and then where children who like to be part of a team but weren't necessarily very athletic could also find a place and so it's through their experiences mm -hmm. and their feedback on what I'm doing that that directs that's what directs me. Brilliant. 
Brilliant. I, I, just listening to you is so inspiring. And to all you moms who, uh, or dads, parents, who are in uh, similar positions, uh, you can see how by focusing on your passion and keeping your focus on your love and your children, you can turn something uh, difficult, a difficult decision, into a beautiful project, a beautiful um, organization, or something that inspires and brings community members together and helps and you have done an amazing job integrating all of this and uh, you know I, I think that's nothing but um, resiliency and just who you are like you, you as a person every time I listen to you and hear your life story and how you're um, sort of guiding your children and your family and I, I'm, I'm personally inspired Thank you. and I, I love you and um, good luck with, to you and this uh, this project. It's wonderful. So, خلاصه بکنم براتون اگر با کوچ الیز دوست دارین تماس بگیرین اگر میخواین بیشتر در رابطه با پریمیر دیولپمنت اکادمی آشنا بشین ایشون گفتن که بهترین رایی که میتونین باشون تماس بگیرین از طریق ایمیل هستش با ایشون اسمشون اسم اول و فامیل الیز پیرز at sbcglobal.net .net. Uh, uh, what is the website going to be up? So the website will be up tomorrow by 5 p.m. Perfect. Um, so they can also go to the website. PDASoccerAcademy.com. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So um, thank you so much for being thank on the show. شما رو دوست دارم دعوت بکنم اگر سوالی از کوچ الیز دارین میتونین از الان تا به صلاح انتهای برنامه با ما تماس بگیرین اگر سوال دیگه ای دارین در رابطه با روانشناسی کودک و نوجوان و میخواین با استودیو تماس بگیرین شماره تلفن تماس 818-301-8000 با ما تماس بگیرین و خوشحال میشیم که از شما بشنویم در رابطه با ورزش و نقش ساکر و کوچینگ و اصلا کلا این یوث ساکر در آمریکا حداقل این جایی که ما هستیم خیلی رول اهم مهمی رو بازی میکنه از این نظر که همونطور که کوچ الیز تعریف میکردن خانواده ها رو دور هم میاره و کمک میکنه که در رابطه به صلاح آشناییشون با اون روانشناسی اونها شناخت کرکترشون اعتماد به نفس و اینکه کمکشون میکنه که وارد کارهایی که خطرناک هستش در اون سنای تین یا توین یرز نشن بنابراین با کوچ الیز خدافزی میکنم و آخرین به صلاح بحثمون رو میتونیم رپ هاپ بکنیم Anything else you would like to add before we um, end? Um. Oh, I'm, d I'm honored to be here with you, Nellie. You know, I loved coaching all your kids. Um, and I would just say to viewers um, that, you know, just keep promoting your children in any activities they do. Keep supporting them. Keep supporting their ownership of the activities. And um, I once um, read a quote that said the only six words you should say after your child after every game is I loved watching you play yeah. and I really think that um, if I had one message to convey is just enjoy your children playing the game mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the process of play and the process of them creating and then the results and all of that will come um, if they're enjoying the process. That brings up a, uh, a good topic um, and we can take a call maybe after that but um, I know sometimes, you know, including myself, uh, my husband, you know, when we're on the sidelines watching our kids play, whether it's basketball, soccer, or um, any sports, we get all excited. As right. parents, we get excited. So we, we start to cheer or um, make certain comments, like we think we're coaching. Right. <laughs> so what, what's your recommendation? Because, you know, I, I find it awkward. It's, it's hard sometimes to um, say the right thing. Um, and I know, you know, constantly I remind myself and I say, just say, you know, I, you know, keep focus on I love watching you play and just being just um, quiet, you know, as right. 
so how do you, what, what's your recommendation to parents who attend these games every week? Um, and you know, as a community, because then you see, you know, so-and-so, uh, so-and-so's parents, you know, they're yelling and they're screaming. And so how do we support each other in a peaceful way? Right. Um, and not offend anyone and support each other so that we're doing the best and what's right for our children. Well, I think there are several things. Mm -hmm. um, I think I belong to an organization called the Positive Coaching Alliance, okay. and it's a nonprofit based out of Menlo Park in um, Northern California. Great. And they have a lot of fantastic information, um, including a coach's manual, parents' manual, code of conduct for parents, code of conduct for players. Wonderful. And that gives um, a great overview about what parents can do and what coaches can do. Okay. Um, I think that cheering and supporting is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, I think when it crosses the line is when it's directional or when it's critical. Mm -hmm. So I think parents should always keep in their mind there's one coach. Mm -hmm. um, you've hired or you have selected this coach and that's, that's the coach. Mm -hmm. um, one of the major things we're trying to teach the kids mm -hmm. is respect mm -hmm. in team sports and that's respect for themselves, not having negative self-esteem or talking having um, bad self-talk about their performance, mm -hmm. respect for authorities mm -hmm. such as um, the referee, mm -hmm. the coach, and also respect for their fellow teammates. Mm -hmm. And as parents, um, the biggest thing we can do to promote those principles is to model them. Got it. So if we want our children to learn respect mm -hmm. and respecting authorities, this uh, undercuts that if we are not respecting what the coach is saying. Mm -hmm. So we are we are saying one thing and we're doing another, and mm -hmm. that's very confusing for children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, another thing is I think it's very important during games to praise kids' efforts mm -hmm. rather than their success. Okay. If you focus only on praising them when they're, when they're successful, mm -hmm. they will think that's all they are, mm -hmm. either a winner or a loser. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you focus on praising, praising them when they give good effort, mm -hmm. effort is something that they can control. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A player can always control if they give 100% effort. They can't control if they're successful or unsuccessful. Okay. By praising their What effort. would be an example of that? So an example for that would be mm -hmm. if, a, if a player really worked hard to get the ball from the defender and got the ball, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you wouldn't say great win or way to steal the ball. He'd mm -hmm. say great effort. Okay. Um, if a player made a run down the field and shot the ball out of bounds, you wouldn't yell a correctional thing like turn your body. Mm -hmm. You'd say great run, great effort. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. That said, it has to be tempered with false praise. Um, false praise, such as yelling good effort, good try, mm -hmm. way to go, mm -hmm. every time anybody does anything, mm -hmm. doesn't help kids at all. Okay. Because then they, then they don't know what to believe. Sure. You know, kids are, kids are smart. They know if they've tried hard. Mm -hmm. They know if something's good or bad. Um, which also, you know, brings me to my to my final point mm -hmm. is that um, I think we really need to carefully examine our, the coach's role mm -hmm. in coaching. Mm -hmm. um, time and time again, I see coaches yelling derogatory things at players, mm -hmm. um, yelling instructions that don't make sense. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. For instance, a common thing I see is a coach yelling at a player, "What are you doing?" or "What are you thinking?" Mm. Um, coaches are educators. They're educators on the field and they're mentors. Mm -hmm. um, when I see a coach yelling, what are you doing? He's not really asking the player to turn around and give him a response. Mm -hmm. He's yelling a derogatory thing because he's upset with the player. Okay. We would never allow a teacher to yell at our child at, a, at doing math at a chalkboard, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, but in the same way, we let coaches yell things at our children that we would never let teachers yell. Mm -hmm. We need to hold coaches to the same standard mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because they have probably more influence on our children okay. because our children are Is there this. A, like accreditation uh, or uh, are certain coaches, they have to go through certain accreditation process to be certified or as a parent, how do we look for those uh, it's very difficult. qualities the, in, in a coach? The, um, Characters. The way that coaches are certified yeah. are, is through a national body, but that really just deals with field intelligence, technical and tactical awareness, and mm -hmm. injury prevention. Okay. And that's where I'm feeling that 
these sports all fall short mm -hmm. because there is no need for them to learn about these types of values and these ways to communicate with kids mm -hmm. and the psychological component about sports mm -hmm. because we as a society have just valued performance mm -hmm. rather mm -hmm. than the psychological aspect. Right. Um, and so the Positive Coaching Alliance has a great program that any any coach can take. It okay. takes about an hour online to do. Right. Um, they have a very short guidebook that you can read in about an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. All of the coaches that work for me mm -hmm. at my camps mm -hmm. or I coach recreational teams, mm -hmm. um, all of them have to be certified by the by the National Coaching Alliance, by the Positive Coaching Alliance. It's, Wonderful. It's how how, how do person. we get to the website? What's the website? Um, I think you can just, it's, I think it's positivecoachingalliance.org. Okay. Um, they also have a Facebook page that's fantastic. Okay. Um, they, if you like their Facebook page, every day you'll be sent a new article about um, different ways to look at things and okay. discussions of how we can be more positive in children's okay. sports. And, um, you know, the members of the board there are the biggest athletes in the world. Okay. Wonderful. Let's post that on your Facebook page, which is um, your Premier Development Academy. Okay, that and I will do it on my Facebook page. But um, unai as shoma ke alaqa darin bishtar darbari positive uh, coaching alliance etelat dariyaft bokonin be website shun mitunin berin. Manam post mikonam be Facebook page as shaket tun darin barnome sepas kozaram. Ta hafte ayande ruz ruzgar khosh va khuda negahdar. بار ایران آشنا با پنیر لیزوان پنیر لیزوان در بستبندی های مختلف کم نمک و معمولی در سپرمارکت های ایرانی در آمریکا و کانادا صبحانه و اصرانه ایرانی با پنیر لیزوان حامل می شود نوش جان با شرس ترابل از شرق به غرب و از غرب به شرق سفر کنید چون چه علاقه من تصدید از ایران و یا از هر کجای دنیا به آمریکا سفر کنید شهرسا ترابل برای اخص ویزای توریستی و دعوت شما برای دیدار از دیدنی های لاسفگاس، نیویورک، واشنگتن و هاوایی و بسیاری از ایالات مختلف آمریکا در خدمت شماست 310-477-9400 و اگر در آمریکا هستید و قصد دیدار از زیبایی های ایران را دارید شهرسا ترابل با تورهای بسیار جالب شما را به دیدار از مکانهای دیدنی شیراز، اصفهان، همدان، کرمانشاه و بسیار از نقاط دیدنی ایران دعوت می کند با شهرسا ترابل از شرق به غرب و از غرب به شرق در دنیا به روی شما باز است 310-477-9400 برای مدتی محدود شهر سا ترابل بلیت سفر رفت و برگشت به ایران را فقط به مبلغ 1250 دلار ارائه می کند. شهر سا ترابل سلام. مهندس خوصو مترجمی هستم. مبتکر دستگاهی تیوی باکس. تیوی باکس دستگاه هستش که می توانید شبکه های ماهوارهی، فیلم های سینمایی، سریال ها و رادیو ها رو بدون استفاده از زیش و رسیور دریافت بکنید. خوشا هستم تا ده سال گذشته تونستیم این تکنولوژی منحصر به فرد رو به خونه صدها هزار نفر از شما ایزان بیاریم برای سفارش دستگاه تیوی باکس با شما تلفن 818 518 1705 تماس بگیرید مرسی
مرکز مسکونی مراقبتی نور نور اکتیو لیوینگ اولین مرکز شمال کالیفرنیا شهر سانتا کلارا در بی ایریا به نام نور مخصوص نگهداری و پذیرایی از سالمندان ایرانی شیک، تمیز، زیبا و چون خانه دوم شما در خانه نور خدمات گوناگونی چون خدمات اولیه بهداشتی غذایی شامل تغذیه سالم ایرانی پسند متناسب با موقعیت جسمی هر فرد و زیر نظر و دستور پزشک به همراه نظارت بر مصرف دارو کمک های لازم روزانه ورزش و کارهای هنری با سرگرمی ارائه می شود سالمندان شما در خانه نور تنها نخواهند ماند و همدم و هم صحبت و دوستانی در کنار آنها خواهد بود خانه نور آماده پذیرایی دائمی و یا موقتی در اتاقهای خصوصی و یا مشترک دو نفری از سالمندان 408 380 چهل سی و شش Great American Car Wash و پومنزین 76 ارائه کننده بهترین سرویس در خصوص شستشوی اتومبیل شما تعویز روغن، سرویس های اولیه اتومبیل و ارائه قیمت مناسب بنزین Great American Car Wash ارائهگر شستشوی اتومبیل به صورت صد در صد هن واش قیمت های بنزین ما را با دیگران مقایسه کنید و ما را انتخاب کنید Great American Car Wash و پومنزین 76 واقع در 221 ونتورا تقاطوی ویلتگاه در شهر بود با سرویسی دوستانه و ایرانی پسند علاوه بر کارواش و تعویض روغن و بنزین مناسب برای اجاره یوهال هم در خدمت شماست Great American Car Wash و پومنزین 76 در دویس 21 ونتورا بولوار تقاطوی ونتگاه و ونتورا آیا می دانید قوانین فدرال در مورد آوردن پول از ایران مرتبا در حال تغییر هستند؟ در دفتر حقوقی یزدانیار تخصص ما مسائل مربوط به تحریم‌های اقتصادی می باشد. قبل از هر گونه مبادلات مالی با ایران با من مهنوش یزدانیار در دفتر حقوقی یزدانیار تماس بگیرید تا ما شما را در این موارد پیچیده قانونی یاری کنیم. شماره تماس 310 780 6360 و یا 415 656 5178 این بیده محصولی بی نظیر ارائه کننده بهداشت با رعایت تمامی نکات ایمنی با نسبی آسان قابل حمل و نقل بسیار محکم و مطمئن با بهرهگیری از لوازم فلزی و با طراحی مدرن کانادایی ریمبیده توسط یک مخترع ایرانی با سالیانی تجربه در اختراع انواع لوازم بهداشتی ابدا شده است با درود به شما هموطنان عزیز من ناصر پولی مقانی هستم مخترع بسیاری از محصولات بهداشتی از جمله دستگاه ریمبیده که با نصب آسان، کیفیت بالا، قیمت مناسب و ارسال در اسرع وقت در زمینه بهداشت حرف اول رو میزنه. ریمبیده دستگاهی بی همتا با قیمتی مناسب و نصب بسیار آسان قابل استفاده راحت برای بچه ها، بزرگ سالان، سالمندان و همچنین افراد معلول. یک هشت سد و هشتاد و هشت پانسد و سی و نه شست و شش شست و شش نخصد و پنج نخصد و هشتاد و چهار شست و سه پنجه و پنج رین بیده دات کام به دنبال یار و دلدار زندگی خود می گردید ولی تا به حال او را نیافتید با مراجعه به مؤسسه همسرجون دات کام شما می توانید یار مورد علاقه خود را بیابید با بهرهگیری از مؤسسه همسرجون دات کام دیگر نیازی به خاستگاری ندارید همسرجون دات کام پل ارتباطی ایرانیان در سراسر سر جهان برای یافتن یار